So we are now recording, and we're basically talking about Stacy's question today in real ball of office hours. And of course, we can talk about other things as well. Uh, we're not limited to that, but I do think that this is a really good primer for something that we can talk about that might be useful. So going forward, you've got your leads coming into Rovolve. Let's go ahead and assume that. Um, you've got, um, you've got, you know, the various leads coming in through Zapier, um, or maybe every once in a while, you know, you just manually put someone in. That's cool if you need to do that. Um, I actually think if you're going to manually put things into Realvolve, you might even consider using a Google form to do it and connect that to Realvolve so that you can auto trigger workflows. Um, I'll just kind of tease that out there <laughs> without necessarily explaining it all. Um, but, you know, since we've got Mark here, let's go into Realvolve and uh, Mark, I'm going to go ahead and give you remote control too, so that you can, uh, you can noodle around too, if you want to. Um, actually, this is a new setup for me. How do we do this? How do we give Mark remote control? Uh, do you request it? Let me see if I can request it. Yeah, one second. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they've moved some things around. I don't even see a request option. Yeah, maybe I can make you a, maybe I can make you an admin. Maybe that would do it. Um, assign moderator role. Okay, so now you've got the crown. Um, and now that I've done that, maybe now I can um, do that. Maybe now I can give you remote control or something like that. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. Um, I'll, sure. have to, I'll have to figure out. Um, I can just talk you through. So, yeah. The, so, uh, the thing that I have, uh, just looking at that post, the very first question I have is, is it mandatory that we do it every week? Is she like assigning um, a person for the week to to get the leads? And um, if if that's mandatory, which I, I guess is fine, the 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 only reason why I ask that is um, mm. because weeks can be different. I mean, holidays and stuff like that. Yeah. You could get into a situation where you're you're not giving them equally. And uh, the way Realvolve is set up is, by default anyway, is to allow you to rotate leads based off of them just coming in. So you can set up a round robin option so that as leads come in, you assign them. So if you go in under the settings, um, there is a, 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 and I can't see, your head is in the way in the in the oh. new format, but that's okay. If you click on settings and then go to the um, uh, the settings option for record owner assignments down at the bottom, in here you can click on the the plus um, on that in that upper right corner. Give this lead distribution uh, a name of some sort. You might call it round robin or or whatever, and you can then pick which of your your users in your account do you want to give round robin access to. So click in that where it says uh, record owners. You've only got your name in there, but if you had multiple people in that list, mm -hmm. you could select from the multiples in there. And you know maybe some are are like an assistant or something like that, so you wouldn't want to select those. But anybody that's in your list that is an agent that would be uh, you'd want to assign them to, you can certainly do that. And then what it does is as a lead comes in, it, it grabs the first person on the list. Another lead comes in, it goes to the second person on the list and then loops back around once it hits the bottom. Uh, the advantage of doing it this way is better um, distribution of those leads. You, you, you're basically saying, you know, next person in wins. It's just, the, it, it comes in at a, a random um, pace. You don't really know how often they're going to come in. You know, one week you may get a bunch of leads. Um, the next week you may not. And if you sprawl them out by week, I, I tend to think that that's can be an issue. 
by doing it more round robin like this, just as they come in, then um, it, it's much more equal for your entire team. Now, having said that, if mm -hmm. if um, if you're wanting to do it differently, if you want to do it by by each week, um, right now without doing some Zapier exploits, uh, you would really just have to bring them in and then manually assign them. So we just we do not right. have an option for picking the week. Um, however, um, I did toy with this some time ago. Um, there was a, a user that wanted something similar, and then she figured out it really worked better to do it our way. But um, what we did is, and, and it would require you to have a paid version of Zapier. Yeah. Uh, but what you could do is set up a spreadsheet that the leads come in and then based off of a date in the spreadsheet, you can check cell values. You can set up a filter in Zapier that says, okay, uh, check this check this uh, cell group or cell and tell me who is the, the assigned person. Mm -hmm. And then it would then pick that and then assign that then to the, the appropriate uh, user, but you'd have to set up a filter to do that um, so that whenever or a three step uh, zap that would allow you to bring the lead in, it would trigger it. However, you're bringing them in, it could be multiple different ways. But then the second step of this would actually be check to see who is the, the assigned agent for this, this period, this week, this month, or whatever. And then based off of that, then assign it to the appropriate person. So it could be done based off of a, a three-step zap, but it's a lot more intricate to do that. Yeah. Um, adding and removing users, you know, you'd have to go in there and, and deal with uh, adding and removing in those cases. So, um, well, and I think that there's another, there's a final option that some people, you know, so like if I was a team leader, for example, and I really wanted to, you know, have a very direct hands-on touch, or maybe I have an admin who I work in concert with and I really trust them. Um, one of the types of workflows that I might do is I might set up, now it's a given, we're pulling our leads in through Zapier, but whenever Zapier obviously pulls a lead in, we can have Zapier start automatically a workflow for us. And the one that I'm thinking of, and now there's a fancy term for this, you could call this an instantiator workflow, but basically it's just a starter workflow that you can make. Um, I've already got one built, but I just, for the sake of, of people watching this, I want them to just sort of see how this works. Um, what you would do is you would go into your workflow section, of course, which is your third menu here in the top, and you're just gonna hit your plus button, and you're gonna create a new workflow. It's a very simple workflow that we're gonna make, but it exploits a workflow function that a lot of people don't really utilize. And I wish that they would because it can be very helpful. We're gonna hit continue. And I'm just gonna call this, uh, you know, uh, Team Michael Starter Workflow. And from here, we're gonna fill in our use with, and our use with, of course, is basically what kind of workflow we're doing. Is this a contact workflow, a property or listing workflow, or is this a transaction workflow? By transaction, of course, I mean from contract to close, whether we're buying or selling. Um, now, in this particular case, we're talking leads, so it is a contact workflow. We're gonna select that little bad boy right there. And in our description, this is just for me, right? I'm gonna go ahead and say what this is. This is to help me and my trusty assistant, Divi. How do you spell Divi? Oh, there we go. Divi out the leads. There we go. So this is to help me and my trusty assistant Divi out the leads. We've got that set. Now, do I want to put a tag in here? No, I don't really need to. This is not, it, it's going to be easy enough for me to find this. Um, in fact, I might even make it easier by going up to the top and just typing in zero, zero like that. Um, that'll, it makes it a longer title, but it'll be easy to find. Um, I don't need any groups for this one, probably. I could think of a couple examples where I might want that, but I don't, we're keeping it simple. 
Um, and I also don't really need an alternate workflow here um, so that when this closes, I can get an option to choose a workflow because the nature of this workflow is to choose a workflow. So we're just gonna click add. And here we got it over here on our left-hand menu now. You see a Team Michael starter workflow. So how does this thing work? This thing that I'm picturing in my mind. Okay, well, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna think through how I want this to all play out in real time. So this is what I'm thinking. Either me or my assistant or both of us, the moment a new lead comes in, I would love it if we got an alert, just letting me know. And I can choose to um, have an alert, just an activity created in Realvolve. I can have an email sent to me. I can have a text message sent to me. I want a text message. That's what I want. So I'm gonna add an activity to this workflow and I'm just gonna say, new lead alert what type of activity is this well it's going to automatically occur but it's going to be a text message i like to color code things that's just how i roll so we're going to give it this nice little melrose color here um and who is this assigned to well yeah, in this particular case it probably doesn't matter that much unless mark you can think of a reason why it would because this is going to happen automatically um yeah. But I would say probably record owner. Um, I so if you've got it set up for a record owner, which is fine, it, it's coming in. It's whoever's by default is um, starting that workflow is going to get it. So if your assistant's the one that's assigned to it, that's great. I would. I mean, if you've got an assistant, a a uh, listing coordinator, somebody that or lead coordinator that that's doing this all the time, just go ahead and assign to them, and then that way, cool. yeah, it goes out. But you know, we'll, if, we'll go ahead and make it Michael here. I'll be both the assistant and the agent. Um, and in the width field here, okay. So this one's actually this one can be a little tricky, but the width field is essentially okay. So we're going to do something, right? So who who are we doing this to? You know who. Who is on the receiving end of all this? Who's our recipient? And in this case, we're sending a text in the width field or the recipient of this is going to be so a little tr tricky in its wording, but contact of assigned to Realvolve user, basically that means I'm sending it to myself in this particular context. And no group necessary, no scheduling necessary, just zero days after start. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an action. And what I'm going to do is notification. And we're going to send immediately. Now, you don't have to do it immediately. Like these are other options that, you know, if you're familiar with workflows, you'll understand how this works. But we're going to send an SMS message. And this one right here is. Um, There we go. FS lead agent alert. Okay. And we're going to hit save. This is a text message. So that's basically the first activity. Now, that's not the last activity because the next activity is going oh, to hit add. Hit add. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. <laughs> add. And then we're going to add another activity to this workflow. And this time, there's two more things I want to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to have the person that this lead has come into to take a look at the leads information, gather information about it, maybe do a little creeping on Facebook or on Instagram, you know, maybe look at the inform. It all depends on the information that you can like, Mark, what are some examples of the information that Zapier can pull in for us? So, um, any, whenever you're collecting information about a lead, typically you're just going to get like a name, an email, maybe a phone number. You could have it um, ask for like the, if they're buyers, what kind of time frame that they're looking for, you know, zero, zero to one month, one to three months, you know, whatever. So there's some, some qualifying criteria that you can be asking, but it depends on if you are or not. And if you are asking that, you know, you can certainly throw that into the notes, but typically you don't collect a lot of information. So, um, so that the lead will come in, they, they're not um, anti giving of information. They, you know, they, 
they're looking for something, but maybe they want to give only a limited amount. So by uh, by the very nature of where you're drawing this from, you may be limited in, in what you can pull, but you're going to want to have at some point phone numbers, emails, stuff like that, at least one of those two. And then you can start um, making contact with them, especially phone number. I mean, if, if they're serious about wanting uh, information, they'll probably give a phone number just because they want information. Uh, they can, you can send it, but, um, as an email, but otherwise you're, you're limited. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but anything that you collect on your form can be brought in. So it's just, it's up to you on what you want to bring in. Including tags, which I think is like a really important thing, or, you know, like, um, and then this may be, it may be not wise, it may be unwise to talk about it without showing it. But, you know, when I do a Zapier um, integration with something like Zillow, you know, something easy, I always bring in the property that they're interested in address, but I also bring it in as a note so that whenever I check that contact that's first come into RealVault, the first thing I see is a note saying what they're interested in. So I don't have to go into the contact tab to look down at the bottom and it you know it takes no trouble at all to just add a quick little note like that i can always delete the note, you know absolutely um so right now what i've done is i've added some merge fields in and we've created a little checklist so my activity is to take a look at the contact full name so it's going to tell me who they are so if it's fred flintstone we're going to know <laughs> um this is a to do and of course i color coded once again now I've added a checklist where it's going to tell me the contacts property that they're interested in if it's available. If it's blank, it's blank. It's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Their home mobile, their home email, and a field where I can fill in any notes if I want to. I could add more fields or notes or, or things in here. I don't really, I'm not inclined to do so right yet. Um, I think that kind of probably comes later. But for now, this is good. And the other thing that I've done, this is just for me. I'm going to Google sync this. You know, if, I, if I'm a busy office manager or a busy team leader or even a broker, you know, maybe it might be good to have that on my calendar so that at the end of the day, I can look and I can see, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've got these leads. So at this point, I'm not really interested in adding an action. I'm just going to have, hit add. And there we go. Now, there is an order that I want these things to occur in just visually for my own sake i'm not going to do that just yet i'm going to show that to everybody here in just a moment there's one more activity i want to do and this is choose how to handle and we're going to type bracket bracket the contacts full name so we're going to choose how to handle fred flintstone this is also what to do we're going to click in on on a yellow and we're going to sign it to me there's no with field here not necessary well, actually, I mean, it, there is a with field, it's, but it's to the workflow contact. And in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I am going to create an action. Now, most of the time, whenever we think about creating an action, we think about sending an email or sending a text message. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click down. Well, actually, first I'm going to click up. So now we see... I can send a message, I can add or remove a tag, I can start or stop a workflow. Tags might be useful to use at this point, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to choose a workflow. And this one's going to be, um, here we go, new lead buyer. And I'm just going to write this, new lead buyer. In fact, I'm going to write, this is a new lead buyer. And I'll even put a little in dash in there and we're going to hit save so now visually i see this option whenever i'm working the workflow but here's the cool part about real vault many of you already know this but i can create multiple actions or multiple options so we're, we're going to do this is this is a new lead seller and oh yeah we're not sending a message we're starting or stopping a workflow and the workflow that we're going to choose here is new lead seller and we're going to hit save now other choices 
about this <laughs> is a long term buyer. And once again, we're going to just type in buyer. We're going to do prospective buyer. That's kind of what I'm using as a, as a, as a sort of a catch all. This is a long term buyer. And then finally, I think everybody could probably predict what I'm going to do here. This is a long term seller. We're going to go down here. We're going to choose prospective seller. We're going to save now goes without saying though you need to have these workflows created right and also if you're me uh you need to make sure that you do it uniformly because this is driving me insane uh so we need to make this a lowercase a and there we go that's better okay now i can breathe um and we're just going to hit add at this point, I've got three activities that are set and they're all gonna sort of happen simultaneously. Maybe one other thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna click on this pencil to open up the second activity and I'm gonna make this number two, hit update. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna make this number three and hit update. We're gonna hit update again. Other things that I can do in this workflow if I wanted to is I could send out a touching base type text message or email or both to the new lead that basically says, hey, you know, this is Michael with, uh, you know, Michael Sholley Real Estate Emporium, and someone from my team is gonna be contacting you as soon as possible. Thanks for checking in with us, we'll be in touch. Something like that, or you can always reach us at. And that's a template that we can create. Um, I could do that, or what I can do is, I can trust the workflows that I'm allowing to start downstream because new lead buyer, new lead seller, prospective buyer, prospective seller all have alert messages with them. So as long as my confidence is high that I'm going to be able to initiate these workflows in a timely manner, then I'm really not going to be that worried about it. It really just depends on how my office is set up. But this is a way that you can have something like this set up. And just just for the, you know, for giggles. Let's let's just go to um, you know Beth Home Buyer here, and we're going to start a workflow on Beth Home Buyer. That's our lead from Zillow, and we're just going to click next. And now, if this was happening from Zapier, this workflow would be starting automatically. Um, I wouldn't be doing this, but I just kind of want everybody to see what this looks like and what it feels like whenever you have something like this starting. Um, Depending on if I've got my cell phone information in the, my RealVolve account here, I might even be getting a text message here pretty soon. Um, in fact, it looks like I did. Yeah, 599-1693. I just don't have my cell phone with me, but I heard a little ring somewhere, but this is what I got just now. A new contact, Beth Homebuyer has come into RealVolve. Please reach out. Here's her mobile number. Here's her email. Thank you so much. So that text message just got sent out. If we go to Beth Homebuyer, we can actually see it right here. Well, of course, um, I have, uh, you know, completely, uh, you know, I've used Beth Homebuyer a few times in here, so she may not have been uh, the best choice, but now I do have an activity to choose how to handle Beth and uh, take a look. So I want to do this one first, which is kind of how I ordered it. So if we click here, we've got the property information she's interested in, a notes field, or if I click here, I can assign which workflow I want to use. So I know I moved pretty rapidly there. Um, and I know that we've kind of thrown a lot of information on how to manage leads like this, um, but obviously we're recording this. We're gonna provide that recording for everybody. It's a lot to throw into 24 minutes of recording time, but I wanted to throw that out there and then have the opportunity to sort of leave the floor open for any questions uh, or for anybody to talk about anything that we might've missed. And oh, by the way, if I log in, to Realvolve, you know, maybe I've been out of the office and I'm on my dashboard. I do see that I've got an alert for two activities right here on my dashboard. And here they are. They're sitting here waiting for me to do them. So any comments or questions or Mark, if you have any sort of follow-up thoughts or advice. Yeah, no, the, the one thing that you'd probably want to do at some point there, and it depends on how your security is set up within Realvolve, is mm -hmm. either assign the the person that you're assigning it to as a record owner 
um, if they don't have rights to the entire database, some do, some don't. Sure. Depends on how, you, how are you doing that? Um, and or in the leads tab, there is an assigned agent option. And yeah. that way you can assign kind of the lead agent um, that goes that goes for that. You, maybe you have um, the workflow or even the zap assigning it to multiple people instead of round robin. You might be signing it to you know whoever can get to it first, and then the lead agent then <laughs> can can accept it or or whatever. So really depends on how you how you do your business, but definitely the the record owner may be something that is needed so that the other mm -hmm. agent can actually view the contact record, depending on how the security is set up, whether so really you good point. allow them to see it or not. It's a really good point. Yeah, because you're, you know, if, if I'm just a user, but I don't have admin privilege and this person isn't assigned to me, I, I'm going to be at a loss. That's a good point. Um, yeah, that's really good. So we've got a few people in the meeting with us today. Uh, you know, we've got Sheila and we've got Kimberly. Um, how about, uh, you know, any questions or comments from you two? And you know, what, what you can do is you can unmute yourself and ask, or what you can do is you can send in a chat. Either way is totally acceptable. And one thing that you may do there, um, just as a, uh, whenever leads are coming in, another option instead of just bi-weekly or whatever, maybe by area, you may have leads coming in that says, okay, anybody that's in, in this area, of the town or in this price range, maybe anything, you know, a million and up, I only send these to a certain set of people that, that I know can handle those. Those types of things can be done and using a, a mechanism like this workflow gives you that capability to have control of who gets them. Yeah, it's a little bit more intense, uh, but definitely something that's that's an option. However, going mm -hmm. back to my, my original thing is, if you've got a paid version of Zapier, you can also set up the filters that say, hey, if the price is in this range or they're looking for prices in this range, um, then, a, then send it a different direction. But you do have to have the, the higher end version of Zapier to be able to do that. It's a really good point. Kimberly, I see you unmuted yourself. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm glad it's a small group because I feel very scattered as far as like what my question is. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, don't feel bad at all. Well, but I have, um, you know, been utilizing workflows and I am not enough. I am very, I'm not very good at this. However, I'm doing the best I can with it. And so I have, when I have a transaction, a, a, a property that turns to a, like a listing that turns into, um, we've got a deal on it. So now it's. I start a workflow on it. How can I tell where I, I I know I have to go into settings, but to find out what workflow is on, because I have got probably mm. 50 workflows that have been downloaded into my system. And there it, it, it's so hodgepodge and hard for me to find what I'm looking for because of so much. What's the best way for me to figure this out? I know yeah. I've got them labeled and the ones that I've modified for my business, I put KGR, which is Kimberly gets results. So I know I've touched that workflow and edited it. But once the workflow gets started, I don't know which one got turned on. I, I don't so know. What, when, I, whenever you go into your, work. whenever you go into the, the property or transaction, go, go into, um, you know, one of those transactions. The reason I'm asking is because I've got one workflow that or one property that's got two workflows running on it, and I don't know which one to turn off and which one I need because it, it's just gotten. Um, okay, I'm not set up right, and I need to make the fix, and I don't know what the fix is. Sure. Hey, Michael, can you start a workflow on one of these? Just absolutely. Yeah, let's do Holly Drive. Start, just start something. And or I could share it. my screen and you guys can look at it and tell me what I did wrong. Well, since there, there could be private information and there's other people okay. on here. We'll... Understood. Let's go to um, let's do the pending on Holly Drive here. And um, from there, let's go to our radar section here and let's start a workflow. And we will start on just essential transactions. Or actually, sample transaction buyer. We'll just do this one. That's fine. I bought this house about six months ago. So, <laughs> um, and we're going to hit next. And of course, I'm I'm a loan off, you know, loan guy. I'm a my own TC and uh, all that. Myself, my, me as well. Yeah. 
contract date. Okay, so what's our contract date? Let's say it's, uh, I don't know. Let's just go and say it's today. We're in a rush, right? So we're going to click next. Um, I'm, you know, we're not trying to fill all this. Leave still. all that in, yeah, doesn't remember. So what happens whenever, whenever a workflow is instantiated and whenever it's started, mm. um, it, um, it does do little notifications and stuff. Go ahead and go over to the activities side. Let's see if it's, so whenever you look at any of these activities in the list, you'll see the little upside down, like fork or it, yeah. it, it's a little workflow that tells you which workflow it's currently using. Right okay. there, so zero zero sample transaction buyer. Yeah, um, in, in theory, right? We go to our dashboard, and actually, you see it here too. Like this one, this is zero zero team Michael starter workflow right here. It's going to be there too. This will probably show up here in a couple moments. Um, the other one, sorry, Mark, I cut you off there. No, you're good. Um, and what you can do is. Whenever, you, if you've got multiple workflows running, you'll see that they they each have the associated name that they're connected to. And if you need to stop one of the workflows, just go to any of the activities that's part of that workflow and, and go and delete it. Hit the X button and it's going to come and give you some options. The first one, which is delete this activity, it's just delete that one activity and leave all others. The delete all would delete everything, including the completed activities, which you typically don't want. The one that's probably most used is actually the delete all remaining activities. So anything that you did complete already will remain as, um, as notification to yourself that you did actually do it, but anything that's not being completed will actually get removed from that yeah, okay. property, the record of that activity too. So, so I guess along that same line, and that makes sense. Thanks for showing that. No, I have um, in my in my um, oh gosh, I guess it would be the check mark that little circle with the check mark in it up to the left there. Okay. I've got twenty three items in there right now. But mm -hmm. when I when I'm on my dashboard and I look at, I don't have twenty three things over in my to the right. That's you mm -hmm. know. Okay, so that's where I'm. I'm like, holy! I'm just overwhelmed with fixing this. I want to fix it, make it all sure. sync. But well, it may not actually be broken. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's very possible it's not broken. If you click on the little checkbox there, mm -hmm. um, and it shows you stuff, <laughs> there are filter options that you don't have in the lower right. So if you click on like the first one that's there, check on the incomplete option. That that will make sure that just incomplete items are listed. Um, you may have it set for completed items. Um, you may have it set for a different person. You may have it set for a different date range. I mean, there's lots of possibilities that you can kind of filter this list on the left-hand side that doesn't normally get filtered on, on your dashboard on the lower right. Normally on the dashboard in the lower right, that's just a quick list of saying, what have I, what's due that I haven't completed mm -hmm. or that that's, you know, old, that, should be completed, but isn't any of those items be in red or anything that's black? It's listed in just a the black okay. font color. Are things that are due today? You know the other. Well, and Mark, I think you already kind of covered this, but you may not always see all the activities um, simply because, like, you might have all these activities. Like, let's say we'll say twenty three, right? And you've only got twelve that you see on your dashboard. It's also possible that because you're an admin you see that there are 23 activities to do in the account, but you are only specifically responsible for 12 of those. And so that you to seems to make sense to me. That might be what I've got going on. So definitely in your checkbox list, make sure that you go in. Of course, you said you were the only agent. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, make sure that you check the, uh, the checkbox for, um, um, the owner of that activity, the assigned to. Okay. Can someone get just a little bit of time with RealVolve, with a RealVolve person to do a quick deep dive or even a shallow dive? Like, what, what's the best way to do something like that? I, I missed part of the question. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what's, so what's the best way for someone like, you know, Kimberly to just go get, you know, like a quick shallow dive with someone to just spot check her work? Yes. Right? Sure. Yeah. So um, 
we've got um, anybody in support should be able to help you. You know, down at the bottom, um, there is the, uh, the the help option or the contact us. We can you know help you through that. If there's if it's going to be like um, you just really need some some extra tender loving care on, on some things, reach out to me. I can certainly help. You know what? Because I, I I track with the concept of real bulb. I love what it can do. It's almost, it's almost too powerful for what I'm capable of. But so, in saying that, if if I learn what to set up from the get go, and and know how to fix one, then I can fix the rest. So I don't absolutely. I wouldn't need someone to walk me through everything. Just you know, if I can figure out one thing on what's yeah. causing my problems, then I can go, move forward make all the other corrections and, and definitely coming to these sessions and just asking questions is another good thing but in, in a particular situation where you know your numbers are a little bit off or something like that definitely um yeah, yeah. you know reach out to us and we can set up a, an appointment and go through it it's it's not hard at all and yeah. it's more of a case of just knowing knowing what you don't know and and going through it uh yeah. one of the things that i love telling people especially whenever uh, it's like, well, you know, I, I don't necessarily know all that I'm doing. I'm, it may be too powerful, kind of like what you're saying. The thing is, is how do you eat an elephant? You've heard that old adage, you know, one bite at a time. Learn the things that's most important for you right now. Don't don't have to worry about stressing about learning all the pieces. But as you gain in knowledge and as you gain in in what you're doing in the automation uh, uh, of setting up the automations pieces and things start rolling. It's like, well, you know, I, I've got this automation going, things are freeing up time for me. Um, now what? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's when you start learning and we've got our training site. We've got, um, we've got several different training, um, um, things that we can help you with. And then we can also just set up some one-on-ones with you as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, just this is kind of, you know, more life coaching type stuff that I'd have to say. But, you know, the first thing that I would say is like with with Real Bulb, I would always tell people um, it's a quote from a film director that I really respect. Um, the quote uh, is my job as an artist. This is what this film director says is to know what I want. And so, like, if you have a sense of knowing, OK, I want to do X, Y and Z. I, I know my what, how, when and who. Um, then from that point on, you know, typically bending and shaping things to fit that desire isn't really too much of a stretch for us. And, and you know, I would just say this, you know, I don't ever want to think that Realvolve is the kind of company that can just afford for you to struggle. You know, you reach out to that bottom right hand corner and you hit that help and you just sound the alarm. We will be Johnny on the spot with the assistance or Jill on the spot. You know, I don't utilize that enough, but I, I know it's there and thank you for the reminder. So, and, and you know, yeah. honestly, the, how do I tool is pretty powerful too. Um, the, you know, maybe, maybe I'll do an, one final shameless plug. Um, yeah. I mean, this isn't probably the, the most uh, useful piece of advice. But one of the things that you could possibly, you know, if you have time do is, is, is kind of what Mark was saying. Um, if you go to our Realvolve community, which presumably you're already a member of, and you go to media, and in media, you go to videos. Um, and I apologize because I look like a doofus, you know, that's, that's technically not the best. Um, but you can actually go through here and you can see all the different videos that we have published. And many of these are, are, you know, just office hours that we did. If you go to albums, we have like 16 videos in office hours. And like, like this top one that we have um, is with Mark and he basically walks you through how to use the app, right? Or this last one over here was one that I did um, back in January, um, but it was actually a pretty good session, um, pretty well attended too. So there are those videos or, you know, honestly, just moving forward, just keep on coming to office hours. Um, we're just not a company that's in a position to say that it's okay for you to struggle and us not help you. Um, you know, we're literally doing this because we want you all to uh, be empowered. Um, we'd like to be famous for that kind of service. And so, um, you know, that being said, um, really, really glad that you engaged um, on this call, like truly. I wasn't you can reach out to me, Mark, at realvolve.com if you've got any any 
you know, particular questions, I can take a look at your account and see would if you, there's... Would you repeat that? I'm so sorry. Mark, M-A-R-K, mm -hmm. at realwolf.com. Okay. I may just do that. Thank yeah. you again. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Well, Mark, I mean, I feel pretty good. I mean, you don't always have to take up the whole hour. Um, you know, Lisa, I also want to leave some room for you, though, um, if you have any sort of thoughts or ideas or, you know, questions, comments. Um, I appreciate everybody kind of being forbearing with me. Uh, you know, Mark, I haven't told you this off of uh, off of hours, but pretty good chance uh, uh, I need to take a COVID test. So, um, oh, no. Yeah, I've had COVID, I've been jabbed, and I've probably got, a, got it again. So. But uh, it's it's a little stressful when you've got a newborn. So if anybody's wondering why there are bags under my eyes, so. Oh, hey. Um. Well, no, all of these have contact. Um, I'll. Uh, Kimberly, I'm gonna take a look at your. I, I do see. I do see you're 23 and that doesn't make sense. So I'll, uh, I'm going to look at this and then get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. I do have specific, like there were specific things that at the time I, I just don't have them in front of me right now to ask you. So I apologize, but I'll try to get that prepared so I can uh, point the, what the problems really are. Sure. My yeah. And, you know, if you, uh, list those out, send me an email, um, I can, some of my might just be able to answer real quick or, or you know, we can set up an appointment or something. So. And I'm sure it's error on my part too, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What market are you in? Um, I'm in really outside of Toledo, Ohio. Oh, okay. Great. My wife is uh, an agent for uh, Keller Williams and we live here in uh, North Georgia and uh, business is booming. Um, it's number one lake town in Georgia. So we've got, uh, yeah. Well, to me, Realvolve is a time saver, and I know that I can be using it better because um, that's what I want it for. So I just want to really become better at it, and I just need to spend more time in it. But thanks for all you guys do on this hour. I think it's very helpful when I do come. Yeah, well, we really appreciate that. And um, yeah, Mark, what, I don't know. Do you think we're missing anything, or do you think we're good? I'm just here, so. Yeah, no, I think we're good for now. Um, okay. And I'm also just honestly pretty stoked. Uh, you know, if you're still watching it, um, I was going to say that um, the person that, you know, sort of inspired this particular session, uh, which was uh, Stacy Ireland Berry, um, you know, if you're still listening, uh, just a shout out to you. And, uh, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the bottom right corner of your Realvolve screen. There's a help button if you need sort of any additional help. But, um, you know, I really hope that this session helped you. And, um, for anybody else who's watching, I'll just kind of leave with this. Um, the comments and the concerns and the questions that you leave us with have a direct effect. Um, you know, we like to respond uh, promptly and we like to respond directly. So um, you matter to us and, you know, we do need to kind of rebuild the economy um, and get things back rolling. And I think that real estate's the place where it's gonna happen first. So really appreciate everybody uh, being here and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.